What's up guys, Pamachi over here. Today what we're going to be talking about is how Sebastian Giovinco moved to Al Hilal of Saudi Arabia and basically the details of the transfer and my opinion around it. So in terms of the transfer fee, Christian Jack reported that it's something around the means of two to three million dollars, uh, which is pretty low, but being that he's in the last year of his contract, they could have signed him on a pre-contract. Uh, it may have been the best deal that Toronto FC could have gotten in the January transfer window. I've heard that his new contract is something like $10 million per year, which is a $3 million pay increase, and that's, that it's going to be a three-year long contract, which will keep him there in Saudi Arabia until he's 35 years old. So right near the end of his career, he could retire uh, with El Hilal, uh, which is pretty interesting. It sounds like Toronto FC were offering him 5 to $6 million, and he rejected that. I think he was pretty insulted by that pay cut because he's currently making seven million dollars a year but Toronto FC saw that he's 32 years old there's a bigger chance of him getting injured he's not played as well as as he did in 2015 so they wanted to offer him a pay cut but it seems like he was clearly insulted by that and decided to move to Al Hilal who's going to offer him a pay increase even though he's getting up there in age and won't be as good probably as he has been with Toronto FC. The contract that Sebastian Chiovinko was offered would have kept him in the top six highest paid players in the league as what TFC president Bill Manning said. Uh, he's currently, well he was, the highest paid player in the league. Uh, but So it sounds like he was getting offered substantial money, uh, like I said, around the means of 5 to $6 million, but clearly he didn't want to take a pay cut. Sebastian Giovinco has said that he has wanted a new contract since mid-2018 as he wanted to lock down his future with the club as at the end of 2019 his contract was going to expire. But the general manager at the time, Tim Bespachenko, didn't want to engage in contract talks with them. I think he probably did engage in contract talks with them. It's just he didn't uh, necessarily want to get into any serious talks as probably Sebastian Giovinco wanted a pay increase or wanted to stay at the, wanted to stay at the same pace. So I think Tim Bezpachenko's plan that if he didn't move to Columbus Crew, which he later did, uh, I think his plan was that he was going to uh, let Sebastian Giovinco play a few games into the 2019 season and then he could give him a bit of a pay cut if his quality of play is declining a bit. But of course Tim Bezbachenko ended up moving so then Ellie Curtis became the new general manager and then he came into this whole problem with Sebastian Giovinco wanting to move if he doesn't get a new contract. So he, he and Bill Manning sat down at the table with Sebastian Giovinco, offered him this pay cut. Sebastian Giovinco refused it, saying probably that he wanted something uh, nowhere under what he's currently making. And then they weren't willing him to pay the same, so he ended up just wanting to move to Al Hilal with which in which Toronto FC eventually accepted. In terms of my opinion on the transfer, you know, I know this is going to be a bit of an unpopular opinion among uh, Toronto FC fans, among many Toronto FC fans, not all Toronto FC fans. Uh, personally, I can see why this happened and why they wanted to offer him a pay cut in the first place, and this is my reasons why. So the first reason is that he just recently turned 32 years old, which of course in soccer terms means that he's aging, uh, which of course is unfortunate for him as he's been playing well for all these seasons, but you know, numbers don't lie. And the fact is, is that when he's getting up there in age, he has more of a risk of getting injured, which I think the Toronto FC front office was worried about paying him such a high wage and then him potentially getting injured. Or another problem is that his form could start tapering off as he turns 34, 33 years old, 35 years old. You know, problems can arise as players get older. And when you're paying him, say, a $7 million contract while he's getting injured for two months and while his overall quality of play is declining, as it has been a bit since he came. You know, when he came in 2015, he was the best player in the league, undisputed, pretty much. And now, people are looking at other teams and other players and they're like well maybe he's not quite the best player in the league of course that's because the overall level of quality of the league is raised but it's also because I think 
he hasn't done as well in the past few seasons. As I said, it really seemed that Sebastian Giovinco took this whole uh, decision to cut his pay personally. They were cutting his pay by one to two million dollars as reported. And, you know, players like Steven Batesher, take him for example, he left after uh, the 2017 season where we won the MLS Cup. He played fairly well for Toronto FC, was a reliable right back, but Toronto FC came to him and from my memory is that they offered him a bit of a pay cut and he was like, what the heck, I played really well with this team, uh, why are you offering me a pay cut? Which this whole problem ended with Stephen Betisher leaving with LAFC and he was a bit annoyed with Toronto FC. But the difference is, is that he seemed a lot less annoyed than Sebastian Giovinco has over the past few months and Sebastian Giovinco has seemed to take a lot more things to heart. It's not just the ownership trying to do business and now it just, he seems that, he seems to have felt like he's been devalued and disrespected by the front office which is uh, very unfortunate and uh, it's sad that his time with Toronto FC is ending this way. Anyway, that's my whole opinion on this transfer. We lost a legend. This is really sad, you know, I became a big fan of Toronto FC in 2014 so you know, I remember the Jermaine Defoe era, so, you know, I was pretty attached to Sebastian Giovinco, like, being at this club, but ultimately, you know, I've known a time with Toronto FC before that. You know, I, I was not necessarily a huge fan of Toronto FC before 2014, but I would say that I first found out about them in 2009 and started cheering for them. I went to the occasional game, usually like one every season or two every season. I remember going to uh, Toronto FC versus LA Galaxy in 2012. I think that's still the attendance record to this day. But you know, I remember a time without Giovinco and that a lot of those times were not good pretty much all of those times were not good but you know I think the TFC front office has some good ambition it's sad to see a legend uh, Toronto FC's best player ever undisputed I think you can say that um, leave the club but ultimately I think it's the best for both parties if he was angry at the fact that he was gonna get a pay cut and we didn't want to offer a pay increase or offer the same pay so unfortunately that's how it ends if you did enjoy this video please like it uh, and if you want to see more content from me more about Toronto FC more about MLS more about the Canadian Premier League uh, please subscribe and until next time see ya